Namaste everybody, Bruce here from rootsoflife.org. In this video today, I'm going to talk about the idea of doing nothing for as long as possible. And this is a topic that is really intriguing when it comes to our Reiki practice and our holistic wellness practice, because it helps us to cultivate a space, first and foremost, of just slowing down. Right? It helps to create a moment in our day where we are able to just let go and just exist and just be. Right? And that's where we really get into the healing, in my opinion. We really get into the space where we're able to look at the mud, right? uncover that next layer of resistance, kind of wipe the mud away from that layer, and sit with it as we're in that space. Right? And the idea of just sitting and doing nothing uh, is one that maybe is really foreign to a lot of you. Um, I know it was absolutely for me uh, for a long time in my practice. The idea of just sitting and being, carving that moment out of your day, is not something that we do with relative frequency, right? And, you know, I would even ask all of you to consider a normal day. Are there moments where you just simply, each and every day, exist? Do you just simply sit without aim or without focus, without need, without want, without belief, without a narrative, without expectations or with the mind, but simply sitting and we breathe and we release and we just relax? It's a difficult thing to work into our daily life in many ways because... A, it seems like, well, why would I even do that? What's even the point of being in a practice where I'm just doing nothing, right? And then B, I think this is the key here, is B, what happens if we sit in that space? What happens if we actually stay there and we don't have any distraction? Well, what are we left with, right? The only thing that's there at that point is us. It's the psyche, the ego, the mind, the body, right? Whatever it is that we're holding on to inside, that's the only thing that we are kind of left with when there's silence. And absolutely, it's a totally understandable that, you know, maybe some days we just don't want to face that. Maybe we don't want to be in that space or we don't want to, you know, look inside. It's tiring. It's difficult. It's, it's scary. It's whatever, all of these types of things. That's totally normal. That's totally acceptable, of course, right? But it doesn't excuse the idea of not doing it in my opinion. And so even if we are able to cultivate just a couple of minutes per day, even one minute, even 30 seconds, where we just close the eyes and breathe, then we are practicing the art of doing nothing. And that's what I really love about that statement. Do nothing for as long as possible. As long as possible is a very open-ended, obviously completely open-ended, uh, compartmentalization or segment of time. That's up to you to determine how long that is. It's up to you to determine how long you want to, you know, sit in that space or how deep you want to go or whatever. And there's no right or wrong to that, right? I would say that the only thing that would be the friction there is just not starting it at all. Okay. So why do that? Why do we just sit and do nothing? I heard a great discussion on this a uh, long time ago on the idea of, of Zazen. Zazen meditation, if you're not familiar with it, is precisely this. You sit maybe on a meditation cushion or in a meditation chair. Uh, sometimes it's really close to a wall, so maybe, you know, maybe a foot or a third of a meter, 30 centimeters or so away from a wall, and you just simply stare kind of neutrally down at the wall, and you just sit. And you just do nothing. So why do that? Why, like, what's the point? And the example that I got, or the explanation that I had for that, of why do we practice this type of meditation, was brilliant. It was saying that it's good for nothing. It's like Zazen and this type of kind of like nothingness meditation is good for nothing. It has no purpose. It has no aim. It has no belief. And I thought of that initially, and I was like, well, that's a joke. Like, that doesn't... I mean, 
that's one of the most like kind of flippant, like, well, then why would we do it? If it's good for nothing and there's no results, there's no belief, there's no what, well, then why even engage in it? And then it started to take a hold. Like I started to see what that meaning of that statement to me actually was. And there's a lot of beauty in that, right? So if it's good for nothing, if the practice has no meaning or no point, then that's the ultimate practice. Because if we can sit with no meaning or expectation or belief, then we're completely free, right? And we can start to cultivate a space where we're completely free in that moment. And we can recognize that every subsequent moment where we may feel confined by our routine or our trauma, our issues, our beliefs, our social situations or whatever, all of those moments are framed with that resistance simply because of a choice. We have a choice to continue that story or to do nothing, right? And in doing nothing, we find freedom. In continuing choices, we find suffering. So there's a really beautiful, simple, neutral space that we can always go back to. And when I started to look at that idea of doing nothing, my understanding with Reiki and the idea that I hold as a teacher, as a practitioner, and as an individual working on myself with Reiki, and indeed all of my holistic practices that I guide people with, that I coach, that I mentor on, it could be yoga, breath work, mindfulness, meditation, psychedelic therapy, um, couple therapy, tantric work, you know, talk therapy, all of these types of things. If we can look at every one of those practices from the idea of a mind of nothingness, then we simply allow that entire practice to shine in its glory, right? We allow it to be what it actually is, which is a journey inward, which is a journey inward to the self, to the, psych to the psyche, to the energy, to our story. And as those stories and those psyches and those energies, as those things rise through the body, well then, if we can still keep a mind that is quiet and kind of sitting in the idea of doing nothing, then the thing that we've been holding on to, we can view that objectively. We can view that finally in its honesty. And so we can start to find that if we can look at things objectively, then we have a choice to either return to the suffering or the narrative or to look at it objectively and let it pass. And to me, this is the beauty of holistic wellness. And it's the beauty of Reiki. It's the beauty of how we heal when we're practicing on ourselves or when we're holding space for others. Because if we can do that, then we might start to recognize that suffering is a choice, that illness is a choice, that friction in our life is a choice. Now, I'm not being so naive as to say that, of course, you know, illnesses exist. I get that. And so I'm not saying like you just have a mindset and then you're not sick on its surface level, right? But on a really deep and on a really intrinsic level, almost ask yourself a question like, what if? What if the illness that we're suffering from right now, if, you, you know, if you're watching this and you, you're healing through something, what if that illness is actually wrapped up in the belief mechanism? If it's wrapped up in a story or a narrative or an expectation or a, a view about ourselves and society? What if? Right? Because there's so many examples of people who have very literal issues that they're working through and they decide to make this what if statement take a different route. They refuse to succumb to the belief, the outcome, the inevitability. And by refusing to go into that space of that outcome, then all of a sudden they turn the, the table on the issue. They turn the table on their healing or on their space. And so if we can be first sitting with the question of what if, and then if we can look beyond what if into silence, well, then we have a new trajectory to work with here. And that's a really interesting space to be in. So, you know, the idea on this topic, the idea here for this video of doing nothing for as long as possible is really one that allows you perhaps the space and the pause within your day to look at things more objectively, to ask that what if question, 
and then at some point to supersede the question and to arrive into stillness, right? And we can do that very, very easily. So I invite you to, you know, continue this practice here that I'm going to share with you. I'll just open it up and then you can see how easily you can go into it, okay? So I'm seated right now on my meditation cushion and I'll just bring my hands to prayer or gashau at the heart center. Breathing through the nose. And I invite you to all watch this and then incorporate it in your own pace or rhythm or to indeed practice here with me. But we're just gonna do the entry, the beginning to this meditation or practice on nothing because from there, we have to let go. So we breathe. Keep a space between the palms. the awareness between the palms so the space between the palms is just an area for you to feel the energy of the body that might be heat or tingling or pressure gold goosebumps cold whatever it might be breathe and relax and then as you begin to feel the energy here in the palms and as you begin to become more relaxed and in this space, you might start to notice that the mind becomes more quiet. You might start to be able to notice that the body becomes more still. Still breathing. Awareness between the palms. And whenever you're ready, you simply drop your hands down to your lap in whichever mudra or hand placement is comfortable for you and continue to breathe through the nose. Now we drop the hands at the moment that we begin to feel the energy or feel nice and still and calm. And if you ever become distracted or out of that headspace, then bring your hands back to Gosha. Back to the heart center and namaste. Breathe through the nose. Let the body and the mind settle again and then just return the hands back to the lap. And now we simply sit. There's a pain in the body, so what if? What if we can sit with that pain until it goes away? Well, then what? There's a memory that comes up, a trauma, a belief. Well, so what? What if we can sit with it until it's gone? What if we can sit with it objectively, without story, without belief, or without saying that this person did that to me, or the world did this to me, or I need this, or I this, I that, whatever. What if there is none of that, and we just look at what it is? That's not discrediting or trying to silence any pain or difficulty, but you're just looking at it for what it is. In that moment, I was hurt, I was sad, I was punished, I was this, I was that, whatever it might be. Breathe. Keep the mind quiet, attached to nothing, focus on nothing. And you'll notice that the story comes from this void behind. It comes from this darkness or this space beyond the mind. I don't mean darkness in a negative context here. I mean darkness in perhaps the way that you're able to perceive light through the eyelids as they're closed. So we wait for the narrative or the story to come from that space, that darkness, from that void. And when it arises, we simply sit and watch it. Almost as if we're watching a movie in a language that we can't understand, so that we cannot attach to it. But we can see it, we can remember it, we can interpret it, but we don't attach. 
we watch. Notice how still everything can become. When the mind gets busy, which it inevitably will, just breathe. If that's not enough, bring the hands to Gashau. Find that balance again and then let go. No matter what arises, just let go. Do nothing for as long as possible, and I invite you to continue this practice for as long as you wish. It's a beautiful space that we can uncover within ourselves that stillness and that depth. And I think that may have been just a couple minutes there, but just extend that for as long as you can. Maybe one day it's 20 seconds, maybe one day it's two hours. Practice it until the idea of time becomes meaningless, until the idea of the self becomes meaningless. And then we start to see that we have choice. We have a space where we can open into and we can find our freedom. So I hope you've enjoyed that practice, that simple but elegant practice that can take us far beyond the entrapment of our own mind. As always, everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel for all the holistic wellness videos and the Reiki content that I'm putting forward. Until the next video, everybody, namaste and to all in Gashau and be well.